Okay, so in the last video, what we're doing at the moment is talking about a step-by-step -step plan, George, right? So I did a video where I talked about the concept of plane and basically we used the laser pen as a reference for how the shaft should be moving in space. Today's video, as a follow-on to that, is a really important feature is you have to get your hands ahead of the golf ball, yeah? So you have to make sure that at the point of impact that your hands are always leading. There's going to be two things which are going to govern how your hands move. Um, the first one is going to be the rotation movement of the body. So if you swing up to the top and pause, so if I kind of stand here um, and draw a line vertically through George's ankle, what we'll see is that as he keeps his pelvis downward facing and rotates, the way the lead shoulder makes its way back over towards the low point line. So that would be a key movement. So if you kind of swing up to the top and then go more horizontal or more upward with your movement, the shoulder would go back, which means that the hands aren't necessarily going to lead quite as easily. The second feature which is going to control getting the hands ahead at the point of impact is going to be the functionality of the right arm. So as we come in towards the downswing, the right arm should stay bent, the elbow should stay either alongside or in front of the hip coming in towards the downswing. And then what that does is that means that the hands, while the time they're down cocking, will get on the back of the ball. If you were to demonstrate a backswing and then immediately straighten the right arm, then basically the hands would not get ahead of the ball at the point of impact. Or if the elbow got too stuck maybe to the side. So if you kind of show me a spin out, yeah, then the elbow would get stuck. And then again, you would no longer be able to control the hand path. Now, the thing is, the S in terms of the rotation is very important for the full swing. But even on things like the chipping and the pitching, you still need to be able to get your hands forward. And that's why you need to understand the two fundamental things is going to be the functionality of the trail arm and the rotation of the body to help you get those hands in front of the ball. Okay, so what we're going to do, one, two, one, to the pin, downhill. But it's the kind of shot where it'd fall into the category of like a little bit of like a shorter pitch type swing. Yeah. So what we've got to make sure is you can see pin location right on the front. And we basically need to make sure you get those hands leading because otherwise if you don't contact this, you're going to struggle. A little bit left. Safe. One, two, five. It's not what you want in a nearest the pin. No, but it's safe in a modern green, which is what I'd want. Shot. Is the distance good? Yeah, nice shot. Well played. You win. Um, you've done this drill before something that I've seen McElroy do as well on social media. The idea would be to take some sort of split hold on the club, so about shoulder width apart, trail hand upward facing, lead hand downward facing, and then you'd swing up towards the top and then you're basically going to pause by left arm horizontal. But the idea is you're going to really put some energy into it so you can see the way the emphasis becomes very much about keeping the pelvis downward facing. And then the feeling is that it's very much a rotational movement. So I'm pulling my arm down as well, but from the side face on perspective, you can see the way my shoulder very quickly moves back down towards my target and it avoids any sort of habit this way. That transition is one of the biggest differences between really good amateur and professional golfers and your sort of average to higher handicapper. Higher handicappers tend to move more up and out the shot this way. Your better golfer understands the importance of staying down. So mainly just focusing on a simple exercise at that sort of pattern of movement would be really worthwhile. The other thing that I like about this drill, if you kind of do that for us, is that one, it will get you much more accustomed to the idea of staying in posture as you start the downswing. But second to that as well is one of the fundamental problems coming back to the concept of driving the elbow is that if you swing back for us, so if I kind of put this here to match your hip rotation, if you slowly spin out, yeah, see the way now if you move that way, there's no space for the elbow to move down into. So the other thing about that's really important about this exercise is by keeping the pelvis more downward facing creates space for the elbow to drive into. So it will feel strange. People have mentioned it to me that it almost feels like you're kind of diving off a swimming board coming in towards the downswing because you're going to be in a much larger state of flexion than you normally are. Which essentially just means, show me that position once more, which basically just means, and then pause, uh, just pause at the left arm horizontal. It just means that you've got a much, much more angulated this way than what most amateur golfers end up being. But it's the thing that's going to drive space for your elbow to move into. Now I'm right and green. Yeah, uh, the red flag, yeah.
Let's just kind of finish off talking about this elbow thing. So you get set up over the ball for us. I still fundamentally think that one of the reasons why a lot of amateur golfers uh, struggle when it comes to uh, driving the elbow is I would kind of still very much work on the idea if you swing up towards the top and pause. You know, this arm stays bent like I've already said, forearm stays very much upward facing. I would try and get a feeling that these two arms are kind of working against each other coming in towards that hitting relationship to help you induce a state of flexion. So your right forearm basically wants to stay upward facing and the, and the forearm is up in as long as it possibly can. But then equally, if that one starts to win the race a little bit too much, the club face will win and you'll get caught under plane. That's when you need to start rotating that left hand more on top. I think if you can almost get a sense of kind of squeezing the forearms in the opposite sort of direction coming in towards pre-impact would kind of help you induce a, a state of flexion. So what I mean is kind of, my saying is that we know that this arm should go that way and most people can understand that. I think the problem is, is that when you just focus on this, admittedly what would happen is the club face would get wide open and you potentially get under plane. That's why this arm needs to start rotating. The problem you've got is if this arm starts to win the race too much then you end up above plane. So that's when you end up golf pros kind of inducing a state of flexion because this arm is trying to drive this way, this arm is trying to rotate, and then as you're doing this, it's almost like my right forearm is trying to rotate up, left forearm is trying to rotate down, which kind of creates this sort of squeezing motion. I would start off with like some short shots doing this first and foremost. So the point is, is that the first video we talked about basically how the shaft should be moving, which controls the club direction. The other important thing is we've got to control the low point and your hands are going to have a huge influence. Now the other features that are going to influence where the hands return to coming in towards the hit is going to be the rotational movement because it dictates where the shoulder moves but then also the trail arm is going to help you should we say kind of push the hands through to get towards that contact. Like I said you need to understand the hitting relationship of the arms to get the club face square but the second and I think the most important thing actually is spatial awareness. If you're kind of saturating all this space and sliding around, then there's no way the elbow is going to be able to drive in the first place. So if you're struggling with impact, I would kind of go back to the basics of just making sure that you feel like you keep yourself much more downward facing so you've got more space to be able to drive into. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Remember, it's absolutely free to press that subscribe button. If you're going to do so, might as well press the little bell icon so that means you receive notifications every time a new video comes out. Watch that step-by-step -step journey. Catch up with you again soon.